Do you wonder what really happens behind the doors of the homes that we show every single day? There are some crazy stories out there, my friends, hundreds of them. I always say, Steph, I got Steph Spading here today. Welcome, Steph. Hi, happy to be here. <laughs> welcome, welcome back. Happy We're to share the tea. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to share some stories with you today. You're going to hear Circle in the background. He'll quiet down a little bit here. And we're going to start with, you know, when I got into the business. I was 28 years old. I was with two guys working on an investment search. Literally, I walked through the door and I walked in on a drug bust. <laughs> you name it. It was on the table. There were guns on the table. And I was like, hey, dudes, wrong party. Had these two big guys <laughs> next to me. And we just turned around and walked out. And I'm texting. Uh, Jenny, I'm going to call you out, honey. She was working for the St. Paul Police Department. Back then, I'm like, 911, I pinned my location, and literally within 60 seconds, the police were at the front door, and they're like, keep on walking. We literally walked into a drug bust, and I've done that more That's than once. Wild. It's wild. <laughs> we're going to share with you some of the crazy that happens and how we solve for it, and there are so many reasons why it can be challenging to get people to go on the market because of of these issues going on out there. And Absolutely. we have to deal with them every day, don't we? Every day. It, never, never the <laughs> same thing twice. <laughs> it's never boring. It's never boring. So what do you think our number one challenge is out there when it comes to getting a home ready for a market and the craziest thing you've seen oh, well, in the past year? Yeah, there's so many. Some A challenge that comes to mind from, um, you know, more recent times, smell. So, and we're going Smells. to list a home. This can be for a myriad of reasons, mm -hmm. but what comes to mind for me is trying to sell a home where someone has smoked cigarettes heavily, heavily in yeah. it for many years. What's the solve? Mm -hmm. So, it's true. Yeah. Like and, we're walking in and our heads hurt, kind of smoke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's you brutal. leave and you need a shower. And you have to clean your clothes. You stink. Yeah. Walking out And of that's the house. a situation where you're thinking, who is going to buy this home? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> being we ha our job is to be honest and set expectations. So redoing carpet, fresh mm -hmm. paint, getting the furniture out, out of a home like that is crucial. Required. And we've done it. Mm -hmm. And we've sold the home mm -hmm. in you know, one weekend. Yeah. It, it's possible. In a multiple <laughs> offer. It took us probably six, eight weeks to get it ready, yeah. maybe longer. Yeah. But smoke is a big one and we have a myriad of resources and ways, but really you've got a smoking house. If you're a smoker, people struggle with it. And if you don't like smoke, we have a solution for it. Yeah. If you're selling a home and you've had smoke in it, then we have to go in and basically resurface everything. It's yeah. just what we do. People are sensitive to that. So scent. sensitive. Yep. So sensitive. <laughs> What's the next story you ran into this past year that was so crazy? I'll share one. Yeah, share one. Naked people. <laughs> it's like, I don't understand. You know, we schedule these. This is multiple times, by the way. <laughs> we get to the house with our clients I have walked into an investment property and these young people are butt naked, laying on their mattress floor, completely out, not awake. <laughs> Sorry, wrong room. We're going to just shut the door. Or people that are enjoying themselves. Yep. <laughs> and we're walking into a showing. Sorry, we'll come back. <laughs> or we have one, which we'll have to have Grant on sometime where he walked in and, you know, there was supposed to be an open house. Yep. He was scrambling. There was no open house that day. No. There is this thing that sellers are unaware of, and nakedness is not okay when we're showing okay. a house. <laughs> we can't do that. We can't do that. Pets. Pets. Big one. Like all different kinds of pets. We had one house. This was maybe six years ago. And what do we call all of the different lizards and snakes? What are those people called again that collect these things? Collect them? Oh, you know, they're like reptiles, right? <laughs> so this uh, home literally had over 400 reptiles oh. in the house, all oh. over the house with lighting systems and watering systems and different fish. I was like, they want to sell the house. They're fully yeah. 
fully living in this home with all of these, this collection. And I was like, we can't put this on the market like this. We can't have people. I mean, there's things that are poisonous in this home. They have varieties of tarantulas and yep. whatever I've that might be. I've run into the tarantulas before. You can't, uh, you can't have a home go on the market when you're a collector of a species of some kind at all. We had we have uh, solutions. We, we can do. move you out. Get the lizards out. There, there are answers to this. <laughs> Sometimes there's animals that live in the house. So I had one where we had a whole colony of bats. It was literally the inspector went upstairs and the entire attic was filled with bats. Bats is tricky because when bats find their way into a home, they have like some kind of receptor. Like there's something mm-hmm. about the homing device on a, on a bat and they will come back over and you cannot get rid of them. So you've got to figure out how to seal up the house. Eliminating them, there's a state law, at least in the state of Minnesota, you can't kill a bat. So they have to remove those bats alive. They have to trap them and remove them. And they have a tracking mechanism that brings them back to wherever they've been living. So bats are a big one. Bats. Raccoons. We've had families of raccoons that moved into a house. And that we had to work with the Minnesota DNR to go in and trap them and relocate them. Especially with vacant homes. I had an armadillo. Is that what they're called once? I had one of those. (laughs) Uh, No lie. It lived in the home, and it walked around the house, and I was like, you know, it's like a cat. It lived there like (laughs) a cat. (laughs) Like, we can't have that. We can't have that. It wasn't going to work at all. Um, I had uh, a family that had uh, befriended deer. Okay. So, and they would let the deer come into the house like a pet. So, and the deer would come right up to the house, right? They didn't care. They had no stranger danger at all. Mm -hmm. So when we would show the house, even though we weren't bringing deer into the house, the deer would come right up to the foyer. We'd have to be there with the agent because the deer would come right up to them. They had zero fear. That's crazy. Zero fear. Uh, In terms of exterior issues, I would say the biggest challenge is like termite issues and bugs. Mm -hmm. Um, evident ones, the box elder season. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. It's like a blanket covering the house. Speaking of exterior, making sure when selling a home that all parts of the home are intact. I one time got locked on the third floor of a balcony on a, in a condo in St. Paul. The oh. door handle on the outside was removed. I had to flag down a neighbor. It Luckily, this all happened within 20 minutes, but I could have been sitting out there for a while. Oh, my God. And in the wintertime, can you imagine yeah, being trapped? No. I actually just had that happen right here in Edina. It's one of my client's friends. She got locked in her bathroom. Thank God it was the bathroom, yeah. right? Did, and but it was 10 hours. She literally, and she has claustrophobia. She oh, like has PTSD yeah. to date on that. So the moral of that story, she was... She didn't have her phone. I with didn't have her. my phone on the deck. So either. she was yeah. pounding the door and trying to trying to get someone's out attention and get somebody's attention. And only by chance that my friend went over there and heard her screaming. Wow. Uh, did he brought the police came in? No, the police didn't come in because they were afraid that if the police came, that they would pound down the door. So they found somebody with a key in the family because that's what they'll do. If the police or right. the fire department come, they're it's gonna pound it down. And apparently the garage wasn't working or something like that. Oh my gosh, there's so many animal stories. Where would I begin on the animal stories? I think mice infestation is another big one. Mm-hmm. My largest mice infestation. Uh, wasn't discovered until the clients did move in, and there was over 200 mice in the house. Wow. So we had to hire Plunkets. They're great. That was a bit of a disclosure issue, but the people hadn't lived there before. And, you know, a vacant home is not a happy home, and little little critters will find their way in to an empty house that has any warmth yeah. whatsoever. Especially in our seasons mm-hmm. here in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. And then birds. Birds are a big one. You get a bird in a house, it's really hard to get them out. And they have to be trapped as well. So we've had a couple of clients who literally just let the bird live in the house with them and fed the bird. I don't know if you knew that story. I did not know that story. But they didn't know how to get the bird out. So they just let the bird live in the house. Path of least resistance. (laughs) I'm like, we can't leave the bird. I mean, there's 
<laughs> drippings every, like they poop yeah. everywhere. <laughs> and then bunnies, the big ones that yeah. have the big fluffy ears, which oh, I actually I have a really spot like for them. Yeah. <laughs> but this particular bunny who was like a cat in their home, it bit. So okay. people would say, oh, pretty bunny, you know, and go down and pet the bunny, but the bunny <laughs> bites. So it's like, we've got to contain the bunny. Mm-hmm. There are so many surprises when we show homes. Never a dull day. Never a dull day. A lot of homes aren't presented like we present them. So we're kind of walking into a shit show. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a jungle. It's a jungle. And there's a real problem uh, with hoarding. I'm not sure. It seems yep. to have gotten worse after COVID. I'm not sure what that's about. Mm-hmm. Um, so I always say try not to focus on the stuff here. We can solve for that. But hoarding is a big one because a lot of people out there put these homes on the market and they don't do the work that we do for the very purpose of we want you to make as much money as possible. So less is more. So hoarding is a big one. And then fire. Um, We've had a number of homes that had fires in them or burn uh, in fireplaces that aren't clean. Yep. And there's this very strong odor in the house. Pe- most people are very odor sensitive, whether it be yes. food, fire, any of that. Huge. So we've got services available to help pull, extract that that smell out. So for vacant houses, what's your very worst in the past year? The box elders are bad. That's not going to give the shock value, but they are everywhere. Yeah. And it is it is the They're norm. They're gross. But they, unfortunately, are a species that lives here. So a box elder, if you don't know, is a little red bug. And I call it the blooming season, but they're, they're very prolific in the fall. And they will hover on the south side of the house like blankets. Do you want to know what the secret is to getting rid of them without using chemicals? Yeah. Soapy water. So you spray, the uh, take one of those sprayers that uh, you fill it with soap. And you'll just spray off the whole side of the house and they'll either go away or it'll kill them and you just sweep them up. So you don't have to use a chemical at all. You just have to do it over and over and over again. So when we were preparing one home for market, that's what the sellers did. Before a showing, they'd go out, they'd spray the house down with soapy. Make it look pretty. Yep. So they do this in the morning. And of course, the soap residue sets on there and they're not as attracted to it. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you can think of? You know, it's interesting when you bring up the lizards, I, why that's such a thing. I was showing a $2 million home not too long ago, and the same thing where there's tarantulas in containers and yeah. a snake, and the just those two things just don't, don't work together. No, I mean, really, <laughs> anything that's poisonous... <laughs> It's going to give people the heebie It's not going to be okay, and especially loose. So those things absolutely need to be <laughs> need to be contained. Speaking of which, if this little barker here were up here, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. Dogs, by the way, you need to take your pets with you because it's absolutely. never a pleasant thing when you're trying to show a house for anybody. No, yeah. and and a lot of people have a fear of mm-hmm. of animals. Period whether it be dogs, cats, whatever, a lot of people have allergies. Allergies, yeah. We have that quite a lot. It's like, well, I can't even see this house. I have a cat allergy or I have a, you know, yep. a problem with hair and, and getting through that. So before you go public with the property, dealing with that piece of it's really important. In fact, yeah, we've had our clients just those. move mm-hmm. out of the house if they have animals and we get the house um, cleaned and that's just no longer an issue. Right. Okay, so how about the people that think they don't have to move out of their home before closing? (laughs) It's a real thing. (laughs) Literally not moved out. You know, we do all the prep work. We advise. We don't babysit. We're not going over there checking. But on walkthrough, we have a number of stories where the preview happens and not one thing has been moved. As if they don't think they have to move out of the house when they transfer their keys and clothes and transfer money. So we have been in positions where we literally are bringing a moving company over the day of closing, packing and moving everything out so we can stay on target because these buyers often are planning to move right into the home and have their trucks loaded. We've had that happen maybe five times. So what happened last year? There was an interesting one last year. Yeah, so I'm going to share a story of a team member. So this is why final walkthroughs 
are so important for yeah. a lot of reasons. Yeah. But if, you know, if, if anything, at the end of the day, to make sure the sellers have moved out. So team mem- our team member does uh, his final walkthrough with his clients and the house itself is looking ready to move in for the most part. Mm-hmm. But the sellers are sitting in an RV in the driveway. In the RV. Waiting. Mm-hmm. Waiting. And They're not going to leave. They don't want to leave until the check for from closing hits their bank account mm-hmm. and this is about 4 p.m on a friday mm-hmm. um this is not standard protocol not at all and by the way so you know just because you close a property doesn't mean the funds are going to immediately be in the account the account unless you're getting an actual check uh wires can take up to four hours just side note yeah or a full business day mm-hmm. yeah and there is an expectation that a homeowner is fully out of their home on closing day and fact, we have a protocol where we have our clients fully packed and moved and staying in a hotel the night of or the day before closing. So their trucks are ready to go if they're moving to the next location. There's a lot of ways this works out. But we always, the point is have our clients out the day before and the house is cleaned and ready to go. So they're not under that pressure and stress. That's our normal rhythm. But believe it or not, that's not the case for many. So occupied homes be uh, prior uh, to a walkthrough. When we walk into that, we have dealt with that many times. And we have a solution for that. Some other thoughts clean your refrigerator. It's a protocol now for us, isn't it, Steph? It should it should always <laughs> be that way, but you'd be but surprised. We have um, homes that the, you know, we're not in the home once we sell it. So maybe a month, three weeks go by and we're not checking these things before closing, right? But we've walked into homes or are mm-hmm. on a listing and a buy side where the refrigerator wasn't touched. Yeah. And it's full Mold. of icky, moldy awfulness. We sure have. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We've had refrigerators where they just had to full out be removed and replaced. They were so yeah. bad. Um, it's gross, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> but it is something to be aware of if you are thinking about um, purchasing. Uh, know that the walkthroughs protocol on our team yeah. and the little things go a long way as it relates to making sure the house is fully ready for you to move into. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a protocol on that. And of course, with our sellers, we rarely have issues with some of the things we've talked about because we're setting some strong standards in terms of presentation. But as buyers out there, be prepared because you never know what you're going to walk into. That is the truth. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. Heard it here first. (laughs) We will share more stories on the next episode of Fly the Coop. Thank you so much, Steph, for being here with me today and sharing some interesting dynamics (laughs) as it relates to selling real estate. (laughs) Thank you, everybody.